All right, what is going on? Welcome back to Cart 63. I know it's been a minute since I've done a video. Uh, I took a I took a quite a hiatus <laughs> from a bunch of stuff this year um, and just went back to local racing. I started racing KT100 again at my local track. That's uh, Paradise Speedway in Geneva, New York. And uh, just got back to, I guess, having a little fun. No points, no, you know, I went every other week, so I was out of the points. It was just a good time for me. But uh, when I was at the track, um, somebody had asked me if I was going to make any more of these videos. And I thought, well, I haven't made one in a while. And then uh, I think it was uh, Heger. Uh, posted up a video of me explaining unlimited all-star carts and I thought well maybe I'll do another video maybe I'll do a couple videos before it gets too cold in New York uh, to do anything I'm not quite sure I'll get those done but today I'm gonna take the, my mostly torn down KT100 cart um, we're gonna put it on the scale just give you a rough idea of how I scale the cart for anybody uh, new coming into it you haven't put a cart on scales yet give you an idea what you're looking for and things like that. I'm, I'm not a professional. I usually do this stuff by myself. So I'm sure there's a couple of things that uh, the real fast guys, the, you know, the soccer guys, they have some tricks and stuff that they do. This is just what I do. And I think what separates uh, them from me is more you, if you're going to do something like if you're going to set your, uh, your camber and, and caster without somebody in the seat, you just have to, uh, make it replicable. Um, you have to do it the same way every time. So it, it may not be exactly what, say, factory calls for, but as long as you know you're at this point, say you're at your negative uh, 2.75 on your right front camber, um, I almost said caster there, <laughs> that uh, if you make an adjustment, it's going to increase it to three or, you know, you're going to decrease it down to two, uh, 2.5 that, you know, that's where your cart is happiest. So that's, that's probably the, the biggest deal you're going to see out of me. I do sit in the seat and, and look at the scaling myself. Uh, I load the cart onto the scales myself. So this is a, a kind of a one man team type of deal. And, uh, I guess we'll go to some footage. Uh, I'll show you how I do things, and then we'll come back here for a conclusion. All right, catch you guys in a minute. Okay, everyone, here we are. We are on the uh, scales. Um, at the end of the video, you'll see my use of uh, that board, and there's a board over here of how I <laughs> how I get my card on my scale by myself. I don't always have help out here. Occasionally, my son might wander by, but that is not the case today. So... Uh, just your standard 2017 uh, Phantom Racing Chassis. Uh, it's a Recon with a KT100 on it. This is what looks like. We have long acre scales that I got from JC Specialties and also a KKP roll-off uh, scale stand. So what roll-offs are <clears throat> is come down here and take a peek. Uh, cart you know, is on the scales now. So say you want to make a major adjustment, uh, you got to mess with some stuff, you got to mess with the cross or whatever. So you roll the cart back, you get on to these. So you're not doing it or damage, you know, you're not going to want to damage your scales. You're not going to want to be rough on anything. So you get it off the scales uh, and you're able to zero when you do that as well. So you come off, you make your adjustments, zero your scales again. So they're reading uh, you know, perfectly roll back on and you're going to get a more accurate uh, setup. So I do have my AccuTo uh, partially set up on here. We're going to come back. We're going to take a peek at what that looks like uh, in a minute. But right now I'm going to get in the seat here uh, and I'm going to look at the scales and give you a basic idea of what you're looking for. Obviously these are my numbers or close to my numbers. I don't have a clutch on. I don't have my micron on, so they're not going to be exact, but uh, it'll give you, uh, the people who are new to this, a little better understanding of what you're looking for. See you in a minute. Okay, everyone, this is quite interesting. Holding on. <laughs> this is actually me setting in my cart. Uh, eliminate your steering wheel uh, over here. I got the KT100. All right, so to my left here, the way I have it set up, I have the uh, uh, briefcase here propped up by a tire. But this is going to give you your percentages. Uh, they aren't, again, they aren't going to be accurate to what I normally run because I'm half hanging out of the cart here. My, you know, my hand's going to be doing describing stuff. But uh, 
in pounds, we have uh, all of your tire pressures. And then together, uh, my class happens to be 375, so that's what I weigh with uh, 10 pounds of lead weight on there. I probably could either go on a diet or put my cart on a diet, which neither are going to happen. <laughs> um, so your cross weight and then your cross percentage. So your cross is your the pressure from left rear to right front on this. All right, to get more accurate, we're going to go over and we are going to look at percentages. So this is when you go to your manufacturer, you go to their website or whatever, they're going to ask for nose weight. They're going to ask for or tell you, you know, what they prefer for left side weight. Left side weight and nose weight are usually, you know, the most common. Um, so your left side percent, obviously that's, that's a bit heavy for what I run. Took my arm in, comes back down. Uh, my nose percent is 45.3. That's probably a little light. Uh, but then again, this isn't a real scale session. I even set my tire pressures like I told you to do because I'm not racing this year. <laughs> so uh, this is basically what you're looking at. A very good set of scales. I will say that what you want to make sure is these are labeled. Uh, they are labeled at the end when you're setting up your scales. Be sure to plug, um, you know, left rear into left rear you know, right front into right front, etc., or you're going to be very confused, and I don't want to let you know how I know that. So, <laughs> all right, guys, we're going to uh, jump back out here and take a peek at some other things. Okay, as promised, here we are looking at the AccuTo system. I will first and foremost uh, mention, I don't know that they make it anymore, but for the longest time, I used this. Uh, square and toe, I believe Ultramax made it. So pretty basic, essentially, you know, you you, uh, you wouldn't have your hub, your tire, uh, lock collar, anything like that hung up on your rear axle. You slipped, slip this portion over the rear axle. Uh, usually your side panel has to come off. And then this part would slip over your front uh, spindle. And then you square the right side and then you would measure off your right side and set your left side. So although it works, it will get the job done. I can tell you the AccuTo is far, <laughs> far better. Uh, it just is. So what we have here is uh, the AccuTo goes into your rear axle. This is a battery pack right here that powers the laser. The laser then shoots forward. It reflects off this mirror and then comes back to show you exactly where your toe is set. And then that obviously can be adjusted in here. So you're moving it in and out, whatever your manufacturer or your preferences are for toe in, toe out. Uh, this happens like a little bit of toe out. Uh, so that's what I have dealt in there. Now, come up front here. And again, this is this is not correct for what I was running. I changed tires. This is, you know, you got to scale with the set of tires you're going to run. This is just a set of tires. I don't even know what the staggers are on that I put on the scale. So this is your negative uh, camber, negative one, negative two, two and a half. Usually manufacturers are calling for anything from 2.5 to 3, 3.25. If you're running a champ or something like that, sometimes they're higher. They need, you know, a little bit of help rotating. So that is, um, you know, your tire is tilted up or tilted down. And that works really, really good. So basically, you know, super simple to, to use. They're a little bit on the expensive side, but well worth it if you're looking to, to really get a good baseline for your cart. That's KT100. <laughs> Okay, we are back up top and just taking another quick glance at this. One of the things I do want to mention uh, is rear track width. So that is uh, essentially the contact patch from outside to outside. So when it, it's asking you for your rear track width, that is going to be the, the contact patch where your tire runs. So these are obviously a set of scuffs. I've had them on track before. You're going to measure from this point all the way over to this point. They may even mention, uh, you know, how far they want your rim off of the frame rail or cassette. Uh, just things you want to pay attention to when you're scaling, what your manufacturer is asking you to do and what they're looking for. So, okay, we're going to pop back up. I'm going to give you a, hopefully a brief scenario of what I was talking about here and uh, I'll 
see you up top. Okay, uh, I hope I'm in, in frame here. <laughs> um, so basically, those uh, that is the basics of scaling for me. That is how I do things. If you happen to you know pick up a new set of scales, a used set of scales, if you have bathroom scales and you're just doing math, taking your your pressures, uh, you know how many pounds is in your right front, left left rear, etc and then do the math to get your percentages. It all works, just make sure you're square, make sure you're level when you do your scaling, and it'll give you a more accurate uh, idea of where your cart is setting. Um, things I didn't mention, like rear stagger, front stagger, all these things affect cross. So uh, more rear stagger is gonna take cross out of the chassis. Uh, more front stagger is gonna put cross into the chassis. These are things you can experiment with on the chassis before you go to the track. You know, you may not know exactly if it'll work or not when you get to the track, but you can do that. So say if you only, you have uh, you know, three quarters of an inch, a rear stagger, and it handles like this, but you know that by putting an inch and a quarter in your rear, it's gonna take cross out of it, you could do that at the track and then find out whether or not that works. You come back in, you realize, okay, that worked better for me or it worked worse. All right, rescale when you're at home, know what you did at the track and then, you know, write it all down. Have a reference point. Okay, this one time, you know, it, it handled really well. The, the conditions were wet. The track was grippy. You know, putting more rear stagger in it helped. So this is, you know, people... You can run an entire season, I've run an entire season, without scaling at all <laughs> and just adjusting at the track. But uh, that, uh, that way to be more consistent comes with scaling. Uh, and every time, make sure your scales are level. Make sure your tire pressures are set. You know, uh, obviously, if you can, get a driver in the seat so when you make these adjustments, you know they're accurate. You may want to put fuel in. I happen to uh, scale dry. I don't know everybody's you know idea on that, but it is what it is. So hopefully, guys, this helped you out. Uh, I know <laughs> I'm just a guy in a barn giving you the information I have, so hopefully some of you could use that, and uh, happy go-karting, guys. I'll catch you guys later.